Hi there, welcome back to the English class. What are we going to do today? Unit 5, Social Issues. Do you agree that there are umpty number of social issues in our society? There is discrimination, there is division, there is not much equality. Yes? So these stories in this unit are going to address a few of these issues. And at the end of this unit, you must be able to understand how when you grow up, you can help in removing such issues from society. Yes? So the first reading here is a story, a story that has the name the storied house. This story means floors of a house. And it was written by Mr. Vaman Govin in Marathi. It has been translated for us today. Let's see. Before we start this chapter, we are introduced to an amazing excerpt from a poem of Ravindranath Tagore. And what does the poem say? Where the mind is without fear. So let's spend a little time on what this great man said almost a century ago. Where the, wind, where the mind is without fear and the head is held high. When does a person hold his head high? When he is confident. When circumstances around him allow him to live his life to the fullest without any discrimination. So where the mind is without fear and the head is held high, where knowledge is free. Every person has the right to education, no matter what caste they are, no matter what is their status in society. Knowledge should be available to every person in this world. Where the world has not been broken up into fragments. Do you think the world has literally been broken into pieces? No. What does this mean? We have created divisions in society on the name of caste, religion, language, even cuisine. The food we eat also divides us. So Rabindranath Tagore dreams of a world where it has not been broken into fragments by narrow domestic walls. What does narrow domestic walls mean? That means walls of families that we have built that this person from this caste and this religion is my family and that person is not. And these walls are very narrow. It's easy to demolish them, to remove them. That is the kind of world he wants. Where words come out from the depth of truth. No superficiality, no falsehood. Whenever you speak, speak the truth. Where tireless striving stretches its arms towards perfection. What does tireless striving mean? Continuously trying, not giving up. Until when? Till the arms reach towards perfection. That means till you've done your best. Where the clear stream of reason has not lost its way. What is this clear stream of reason he's talking about? That means our thought process. It must be clear. It must be honest. It must come from the truth. Where the clear stream of reason has not lost its way. Where has it lost its way? Into the dreary desert sand of dead habit. So he's saying that our thought process has lost its track. And where has it ended? In a dreary desert sand. Deserts are so dry, if a stream goes into a desert, what happens? It will dry and die. So he does not want our logical reasoning capacity to dry up in a desert of dead habit. What is a dead habit? Doing something just because society says so. You not even thinking why you are doing it. So where the clear stream of reason has, lost, has not lost its way into the dreary desert sand of dead habit. Where the mind is led forward by thee. See here, he's saying, I want a world where the mind is led forward by us. Yeah? 
The mind shouldn't tell us what to do. We should tell our mind what to do. Where the mind is led forward by D into ever widening thought and action. Widening thought means what? He wants you to be broad minded. Do not discriminate. Do not treat every, anyone as different from you. We are all similar. Into the widening thought and action. So not only your thoughts should be broad minded, your actions too. Do what you say. Pre practice what you preach. Into that heaven of freedom, my father, let my country awake. So Ravindranath Tagore is saying, this is the lovely dream that I want my country to wake up to. And who is he asking all this? Who is my father here? No one else but God. So let's not wait for God to do this for us. Let's understand what this great man said a century ago and change the society because even today this poem fits because even today society is almost similar to what it was before independence. Independence from rulers is not enough. Independence from false prejudices in society is what we want. That day is when our country will be free. So who wrote this? Nobel Prize winner Ravindranath Tagore in his book Geetanjali, a dedication of songs. That's what it means. So let's go into our story, The Storied House. Follow me when I read. There was something really wrong with the state transport bus, the regular buses that the government provides us. It had come up the winding road in the mountain as if with a lifetime effort. Imagine how difficult it was for the bus to climb a slopey road. The road was now downhill, yet the bus moved as slowly as a sick man walking with the help of another. Even though the road was now downward, the bus is finding it so difficult to move. It reached the plain where the dispensary building was situated. What is a dispensary? A place where medicines are made and distributed. So finally, the bus halted there and stood still like an obstinate bull. Obstinate means stubborn. So how still was it? As if a stubborn bull that wouldn't move. Now the destination was hardly a mile or two away. But the driver was sore, he was tired and the conductor had no option but to be silent. When they realized that the bus wouldn't move any faster, a couple of passengers exclaimed, God damn it for a bloody nuisance. These are swear words which we better not use. So the passengers are irritated and frustrated that the bus is not moving. The conductor asked the passengers to get down and they all put their strength together to push the bus. Having gained this initial momentum, that means when everyone pushed, that initial force was enough. The bus started. Passengers clambered up. That means climbing in an awkward manner, jostling one another, pushing each other. The conductor rang the bell and the bus gradually took on speed. It entered the village reluctantly, as if it was not willing to, like a truant child being dragged to school. Who is a truant child? A child who doesn't go to school and has not even taken permission for leave. So the bus moving into the village looks like you are dragging a child to school who doesn't want to go. As it wound its way through the curves on the outskirts, it groaned and croaked like a hen about to lay eggs. Now this is personification. Can a bus really groan and croak? They're just telling us in order to be able to imagine how it groaned and croaked like a hen about to lay eggs and stop with a bang in front of Bujaba Patil's residence. Looks like it's an important building, famous name it has. As it halted, as it stopped, 
it gave a big lurch. What's a lurch? When somebody puts a sudden break, all of us inside rock forward, right? That is called lurch. So as it halted, it gave a big lurch, sending the passengers helter skelter. Everybody fell off their seats. Churned like water in a pitcher when the carrier stumbles. Imagine a person carrying a pot of water. If he stumbles, how does the water spill out? That's how the passengers spilled out of their seats in that bus. There was no longer any reason to hang around in Bombay. Now, who is this about? This is the main character of the story who's traveling in that bus. He is telling us why he has returned to his village. He had worked honestly for the past 35 years in the dockyard. What is a dockyard? The area in a port where they unload or load merchandise from ships and boats. So he had worked for 35 years in the dockyard and had retired from service two months before. So retired means he's around 60, 65, an old man. Not that he had held an important position. He had merely got an extension for two years. So he has been a worker all his life. During that period, he had become a supervisor who takes care of all that's happening on the dock. Otherwise, his entire life had been spent lifting heavy loads. He had worked very hard whenever he could, day and night. All the passengers got down. The coolie put his hand on a huge wooden box. Who is a coolie? A person who helps you carry luggage. He put his hand on a huge wooden box and shouted, Whose box is this? Bayaji, the main character we are talking about. Bayaji, who was brushing away the dust from his body, answered, Oh, it's mine. Please lower it down. The coolie heaved and grunted as he lowered the box. When do you heave? When you are lifting something heavy. He heaved and grunted as he lowered the box which Bayaji caught with ease. So imagine how strong he is. Bayaji had packed his entire household goods in this box. God knows what's inside it. Bayaji had crossed 60 but was in sound health. That means good health. He had a sturdy frame, strong, right from birth and hard work had given a well-formed shape to his strong body. That's what hard work does, makes us fit. He paid 15 paise to the coolie, put the box in which he had thrown. Let's see what all was in his box. Pots and pans and sundry other things. Sundry means irrelevant, unnecessary objects too. God knows what not he packed on his own head. He lifted the huge box, put it on his head and began to walk in the direction of his house. As he reached Kadam's house, one of the persons who lives in that village, he saw Bujaba coming towards him. Remember, Bujaba Patil's residence, an important man, I guess, in the village. Bujaba was a known rascal of the village. Who is a rascal? A person who never respects another person. He's called a rascal. So that's what he was. Bayaji balanced the burden on his head. Straightening his neck, he said, Greetings to you. Sir, how are things with you? Bayaji was a mahar by caste. That means low caste. And according to age old custom, what should he have done? He should have greeted Bujaba with, My humble salutations to you, sir, who are my mother and father. So that's how he was supposed to address him. But what did he say? He just said greetings. So when Bayaji merely said greetings, Bujaba became furious and said, Do you think you can become a Brahmin merely by saying greetings? Can you forget your position simply because you've turned Buddhist? Now here, I'll stop for a moment. What's happening here? Clearly, Bujaba was a Brahmin and clearly Bayaji was a low caste man. So where does a Buddhist come? Some low class people, they are so tired of being discriminated that they adapt 
some different religions that do not discriminate. Buddhism does not believe in caste system. They only believe in karma. That means your actions are what are important. They make you great or not great, not your caste. So Bayaji has embraced Buddhism for this very reason to gain the same status in society that he is not given by us. So, Bujaba is all furious. That's it for today. Let's see what happens next in our next video. Till we continue.